So Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski have spent a long time warning about you-know-who, who poses a dangerous threat to the future of democracy. So this morning, they surprised a lot of viewers when they talked about how they spent the weekend. Take a look. Joe and I went to Mar-a-Lago to meet personally with President-elect Trump. Wow. It was the first time we have seen him in seven years. Now, we wow. talked about a lot of issues, including abortion, mass deportation, threats of political retribution against political opponents, and media outlets. We talked about that a good bit. I got to say, I know that that shocked a lot of people. Yeah. Because that's like nobody expected that to ever, ever happen. No. And then boom, it happened. That's funny, yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> And it's going to come as no surprise to anybody who watches this show, has watched it over the past year or over the past decade, that we didn't see eye to eye on a lot of issues, and we told him so. What we did agree on was to restart communications. For nearly 80 million Americans, election denialism, public trials, and January 6th were not as important as the issues that moved them to send Donald Trump back to the White House with their vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Joe and I realize it's time to do something different. And that starts with not only talking about Donald Trump, but also talking with him. Mm. So is this the approach that uh, is going to work with a gentleman who campaigned on calling the media the enemy of the people? So I actually think it was the right thing to do, and I've heard a lot of folks... I was just about to say that, like, get out of that TDS bubble. Yeah, whoopee, come on. Get out of it. Still there. Look at what's going on around you and adapt to it. You know, even if you don't like them, there are still things that she may say that is good about them, and there's still some things that she may say is bad about them. Even if you don't like them, the people put him in there. Yeah. I mean, the, we, we voted. I mean... It, he won for a reason, you know. We need a change. Yes. And you know what? You know, in in two years' time, when everybody's like, "Oh, you know what? Uh, actually, the right choice was made." And then Whoopi is still there. Like that's the one person who's like, <laughs> she's gonna be like a, one of those crazy conspiracy theorists. They're like, "Oh, he's so bad." That's what's gonna <laughs> happen. That's what's gonna end up. <laughs> On the left, coming after Joe and Mika, saying, "Don't normalize him." Well, 75 million plus American voters normalized Donald Trump by making him president elect Donald mm -hmm. Trump. And this notion that if sort of the resistance who opposes him stayed in their safe bubbles, sat on their hands and just complained about him for four years, that that would have a bigger impact than sitting down. I talked to Meek actually. They met with him for over 90 minutes. They raised very valid concerns. They both see themselves as opinion journalists who want to actually be able to engage the person that they talk about every day, actually be able to raise issues with them when they're concerned. And in the same way that I thought it was right for Joe Biden to meet with him, and that I think it's right for presidents to meet with foreign adversaries to try to find diplomatic relations and ways to bring people together and solve problems, this is absolutely the right thing. I would sit down with Donald Trump, I would interview Donald Trump, and I'll go a step further, I hope good people work for him. We need to stop demonizing people because they supported a man who just yeah. became president of the United States. Oh my, did I just hear that? Did I just hear that? Guys, listen, that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know, there's so much that divides people because of like politics and it shouldn't be that way at all. It should be exactly how she said it, yeah. where you could just sit together, even if you share differences, you still sit together, have a nice conversation because at the end of the day, we are all human. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's definitely more important. We have to think more about the country and what's good for us. Yes. Like 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 always, it's, it's, it's more why like about what he said mm -hmm. rather than what his policies are yeah. and that's that's i think that's ultimately the reason he won is that you know we've got one side saying oh you know he's just bad because he said this mm -hmm. and then we've got i'm gonna make change this is how i'm gonna do it mm -hmm. and that's why and that's why he won he's the he was he's the only only one who's gonna make change uh and you know we just we need to come to the understanding, be together, you know, we need to vote who's best for the country. Yep. Well. And, and yeah. we, I think we did. And the people, the people that. voted. Good people are around him and smart journalists are challenging him. Well, <laughs> look, uh, there is a sobering reality, right? Which is that we have, um, in 2016, I think people voted for the unknown and voted thinking maybe the gravitas of the office was going to change him. It didn't. In 2024,
people voted knowing who he was. And nothing that he is doing uh, as, as concerning as I find it and disturbing as I find it should be shocking because he told us he was going to do these things. Yeah. He was surrounded by the people he's appointing and he is keeping to his word and people voted for him knowing that. And so it's hard. It's a sobering truth. It's hard to reconcile that with, with what we have been doing uh, for the last eight years. I will never sit with him. I don't think I'm going to have to. I don't think I'm going to have to make a decision because I don't think I'm ever going to get invited. And listen, the truth of the matter is, as we know around this table, that it is hard to criticize and denounce the abuses of power by Donald Trump when he is president. We have been there before. Mm -hmm. it, it means threats. It means death threats. It means uh, retribution. Am I confused or is she not a journalist? Yeah. Like, my thing you. is, you should be able to sit with anyone, even if you have hard questions for them. Because that's what you're supposed to, to show your audience. That's what yeah. you're supposed to ha let your audience hear. Yeah. But I feel like they are, like, I feel like they just have, like, so much, like, tedious. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, like, they just do not like them so much. Yeah. That they got to say, oh, I'm not doing that. I don't have to do that. I don't want to do that. I know. It's but crazy. that's what the people want to hear about. I know. It, you know, it's the, it, it really is the TDS. I mean, at this point, that's all it comes down to. Um, they're just having so many symptoms of it, you know, and, that, and that's... They got to get out of that, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe they'll release a vaccine or something. <laughs> <laughs> against your family it means crazy things showing up at your house it means yeah. lawsuits it means all sorts of things we've done it before and if we have to do it again we will do so again i think there's a lot of people who are probably looking at what um joe and mika did and find it opportunistic there are people who change their stripes or maybe their spots i should say today depending on who is in power and what benefits them i don't know that that's what they are doing and uh, to me, it's a to-be-determined yes. situation because mm -hmm. right now it's the transition. Mm -hmm. we, act, we don't know what he's going to do as president. We don't know what they're going to do if he commits abuses of power mm -hmm. as president. So, you know, everybody has to live with their decision. Everybody has to look at themselves in the mirror. I'm good. I absolutely wow. think it was the right decision. And I think it's good that they work on MSNBC. I don't want only Fox people going to see them. That was some of the problem here that I think everyone yes. could agree, maybe even yes. people that voted for Trump yes. could agree, that the things they're watching on Fox mm -hmm. are wrong. That's the only network that's had to pay billions of dollars because they got it wrong. So I don't want only Fox people sitting down with him. I want everyone. I don't need to know their motivation. I just... I just said yes, 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 but that is what I'm talking about. And what I mean by that is it shouldn't just be one sitting with President-elect Donald Trump. It should be everybody yeah. sitting with President-elect Donald yeah. Trump because at the end of the day, they're all journalists. People want to hear what they have to ask him. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure that they are numerous of questions that they can ask President-elect Donald Trump that the people want to hear. They got to get out of that bubble of like, oh, he's this, he's that, and, yeah. and get into a bubble of like, well, what do the people want to hear? What do the people want us to ask him? Because it's not every day where I or you can just walk up to prison like Donald Trump and just ask him questions. No. But they have a better advantage of asking him questions yeah. that the people want to hear about. Yeah, they just need to do a better job and ask better questions. I think I think if they luckily the more the more journalists and the more networks that reach out to him to do interviews, yeah. the the higher chance that you know, the high probability a, a good question will be asked. So yeah. at least we have that. You know, we don't we don't just want a biased network yeah. uh, asking him questions. Um, but yeah, that's what I mean. That's definitely what we need. And 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 just like these networks, they just at this point, there's there's no reason to be like biased anymore. I mean, no. he's 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 president. I think so. The thing is, is is for everybody to come together and be united. Yeah. You know, like I don't think people should be divided. I think they should be able to hear people's opinions and be okay with doing that. Yeah, I think that's definitely that's going to be tough to get through to a lot of people. Yeah, I don't think I don't think really it'll it'll ever happen completely. Yeah. But if we start working towards that, you know, once again we are the United States. You know, mm -hmm. at this point we have to come to terms with what's happened and just and go with the flow. Yeah. You get nowhere in silence. Conversations had to be had. You don't, I don't, I also don't believe in like, we don't platform or we don't do these things. I feel like those are very pie in the sky. 
If you're not having conversations and winning on ideas, you're not moving anywhere. So to me, this is what the country decided. I He's not calling me, but he, <laughs> he's not calling me either to be He clear. doesn't know who I am. But if he did, I would absolutely. Yeah, that's a good thing. I would absolutely sit down and always have a conversation because I'm confident enough to sit at a table in contrast and disagree when I disagree. I'm not scared. I'm not afraid. You have the conversations or nothing happens. Talk to me now. Yeah. This is what I want to hear here it comes. You can already see it. Well, okay. You can already see it. Look. You can oh, oh, already here it comes. see it. TDS. All right, let's just, let's just go. Let's just go. Bottom line is that America needs a free press that is willing to speak truth to power right now. More than ever. And... I think that we have to be very clear-eyed when we think about the president-elect and cover the president-elect. And I don't think you need to sit down for 90 minutes at Mar-a-Lago and kiss his ring to be able to speak truth and to be able to cover a story. So maybe they're not journalists in the true sense. Maybe they're saying that they're opinion general uh, journalists. But we have to remember that Trump is the guy who ushered in the era of fake news. He is the guy who ushered in alternative facts. He is the guy who attacked three black female journalists. He's the guy that revoked Jim Acosta's press credentials for asking him a question. And so I think that this president elect, I hate to say it, um, would like nothing more than to- All right, yeah, that's what it is. She just has so much TDS. She can't get it out of her system. Man. She uh, like she just got to get over it. Yeah. Even if you don't like him, the people voted in a majority for him. Yeah, I don't know what like I don't actually know what she's trying to do at this point, but like you could you literally could just anytime Trump is mentioned, she's literally like she's thinking about about ways, all the bad yeah, things. she's thinking about ways to be like, oh, how can I make, how can I say something bad about him, or you know, how can I make this, uh, this productive conversation into uh, we just don't like him. You know something? I've been watching her for quite some time now. Yeah, and I gotta say this: I physically have never heard her say anything that was positive. <laughs> yeah. it, well, my thing is, but like, you're supposed to like. Say the good and the bad. Yeah. She doesn't like saying the good. No. She doesn't like pushing out the bad. No, yeah, I feel bad. I feel bad because, uh, I mean, can you imagine living life and always only thinking about the bad stuff? Like, no. Like, like, <laughs> like it, it'll just mess my mood up. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's what's probably what's happening here. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, guys, let us know what you think about today's video in the comment section. That'll be a wrap for today's video, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.